this is our presentation about uh, the game we've chosen and the core principles of it. Uh, the core principles of the game design are to set rules that the game needs to be able to be a good game. Uh, some will include a good uh, narrative game to have a good story based level design depending on how it looks, good character design as well. A uh, challenging game would be good for players as some would be too easy, people would really play it. To have surprises in it as well as a bit of surprise in the game will like make the player be uh, more active in it. The rewards as well, based on how good they are and the yeah, mechanics are to be easy to understand and easy to follow. Uh, we went through a couple of ideas, we just brainstormed, uh, everybody thought of an idea, we wrote it down. In the end we chose an FPS RPG shooter game. So whenever we figured that out, what we wanted to do, we decided that and chose that type of game to genre. Uh, yeah, so this is just more development on like our different ideas and everything, and this is more into like what like uh, like it's on PC and console and all, uh, and then they'll be able to customize their avatar and um, yeah, the player's choices will affect the game so. Depending on your choices, it will like affect your surroundings and how different NPCs will like treat you within the game. Yeah, that's this is just more group evidence of us coming up with the concept idea in class and how we had figured out that we wanted to come up with a first-person shooter game, an MMO, and an RPG. We had all brainstormed a lot of different ideas, but that was the main one that had come up. So this is just a slide of everybody that's covering what I'm doing, genre, synopsis, target audience, arms, doing challenge, mechanics, and conclusion. Aldous is surprise, reward, narrative, given as characters, player, level design, and platform. So the genre that we had picked for this game was a first person shooter, massive multiplayer online role playing game. The reason that we picked this game was because it's becoming one of the most popular games to play. People appreciate more being able to freely play with their friends in an open world and also being able to have a, an avatar that they can customize and design because a lot of people like that fantasy feeling. Also first person shooter games, they're just they're a big they're a big selling point because well one of the biggest games in the world is Call of Duty. So you know it was just it's just an obvious choice. This is just some examples of you know games that we had used, you know, first person shooter game is a game that you view in first person holding a gun or any type of weapon that you use to fight against other people. DC Universe Online is a multiplayer online world. It's like a it's like a big open world simulator that you design an avatar and then you go and you do different types of missions with people online, different types of groups and teams and you can have people in and then a role playing game is a game just that you play as a different avatar than yourself or somebody inside of a world. So the reason that we picked this genre was because we felt as though it fit the narrative of our story a lot better other than any type of game would. Because this game is based around war, we decided to do some research on other type of games that were war related and playable on PC and consoles. The biggest ones being Battlefield and Call of Duty. They all have they're all first person shooter games, they're all online and they all have a story base. And after doing some studying of the games collectively we agree that for the best experience of the player it will be an online first person shooter like other games in that genre were. So the synopsis is in the year 
2213, a group of NASA researchers have been sent to research the Earth-like planet Gliese 332b. Little did they know that they got to the planet, a war would be amongst them. The researchers are now trapped and have no other way to survive and fight. Traveling from planet to planet, will you be able to bring peace amongst the galaxy or will you die trying? You're playing as, you're playing as a space explorer in the year 2013, where NASA has now found an Earth-like planet called Gliese 332b that they have sent the researchers to go. But obviously as they went, this is a planet that is, it's a real planet, but it's like 62 light years away. So as they got to it, things had happened to the ship that they weren't prepared for. As a technological advance, it wasn't advanced enough. They crashed on the planet and are now stuck. But the planet's at war, but there's also something that the planet didn't tell them. And player has to figure out throughout the game what they want to do. So the target audience that we decided for this game is more aimed towards men because the player base for first person shooters are men. Mm -hmm. and it's always going to be men. Um, actually 66% of players that play first person shooter games are men and 48% of players on PC and console are only women. So it's just a more male dominated area. So it was more going to be aimed towards men, especially war games. That's more something that would interest the male views. We also decided that the game would be Peggy 18 due to graphic violence, you know, killing people. It's not exactly child friendly, so. Platforming uh, opted for consoles and PCs. Uh, this is because the game has a lot of mechanics. Um, if you have them all on something like a mobile device, it would clunk the screen quite a bit, having all the input. Uh, another reason is hardware limitations. Um, it can, we want an immersive experience for our audience, so to have hardware limitations is a big problem. Uh, we, want, we want best graphics possible, and and less performance issues. Uh, so this left console and PC is the left one. That's true. The narrative we've chosen for this game is uh, as the player advances, he can choose whether he wants to do this or not. Uh, the narrative will change as the player goes on. So depending on the choices the player will choose, uh, the game will change on its own. As some will be more, some options will be more violent, some will be more peaceful, and some will be in between in the middle. Uh, example we use for a uh, story based game would be Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, depending on your options that you choose, uh, the game will choose its own path for you and have different. Different paths you can go down, and some choices will have consequences or good rewards, or some will make you sink down and give you bad items and rewards. The inhabitants of Place 332 share many similarities to humans, uh, however, the different climate and atmosphere. Uh, means that their skin and hair colors are not as limited uh, as humans. They are often found in varying colors, the most common skin colors being pink, yellow, green, and blue. However, they are not limited to these four colors. The standard white found in the human body is actually black for these inhabitants. Uh, inhabitants of the candy planet are cute humanoid animals, uh, but be careful not to provoke them. Otherwise, they will show you they're not so deep and adorable stuff. Inhabitants of the diamond planet are much like the planet they come from. In fact, they are literally a bundle of walking down with their geometric physique. Their eyes will glow blue if they are here and pink if they are blue. And they also come to find that energy weapons aren't very attractive against them due to refraction. Uh, inhabitants of the nightmare planet are made of pure glass 
Glace 333 is very similar to Earth. Uh, however, grass is a dark shade of blue, and the sky is a similar color of blue. Uh, overall, Glace isn't a very challenging planet to, traver to traverse, the biggest challenge being crossing the river or on the morning, etc. Candy Planet has bright, bright vibrant colors on the ground and in the on the ground and in the sky. The trees are fluffy, like cotton candy. Cotton candy bushes can make it hard to traverse this planet, slowing the inner traps, if not destroyed. As well as this, some of some surfaces will be sticky. This can be used to your advantage or cause, cause problems in other cases. The diamond planet can be tough to traverse with its geometric architecture, making it dangerous to move through some areas without the right precautions you will damage your vehicle, possibly even yourself. The Nightmare Planet is the most dangerous of the four. Uh, it has patches of molten glass around the area. Um, you should definitely keep an eye on the sky uh, on this planet. Certain areas will bring charged glass, so be sure to plan a full window. This is more concept art drawn by me. Resources and materials you can find uh, through the whole galaxy uh, will be different depending on what planet you're in. Some will have their own resources, say specific for that uh, planet, or one will have that you need. Uh, some items that are really rare can be acquired by eliminating the uh, campsites you'd find around the planets. Um, that I would get rewarded for each planet or campsite that would clear out. After each campsite is cleared out, the player will be rewarded with a new weapon, a blueprint, or a new technology, or, or a really rare resource. There are multiple surprises inside this game, as you maybe encounter a single enemy and it have a friendly talk with you, or you'd find a whole campsite that will try to kill you. Each planet will have their own unique surprise, as some can be very friendly, some can be scary, and some will try to kill you. Each planet has its own lore and adventure that you can go around. Uh, different planets will have different surprises waiting for you, for like music uh, while you're fighting in game, or peaceful music while you're walking around traveling. Some aliens might give you a surprise after you've completed their quest for them. So we want a new challenge in our game, so our game would be like be boring to the players who play it. Um, so yeah, there'll be different enemies on each planet with different like attack and play styles. So maybe stronger on like the Nightmare Planet, and then on Glaze three three two three B, there'll be like more easier as it will be the planet you start on. Um, Yeah, um, we also had the idea of like 
So obviously there's the two options, whether you want to like make peace with the planets and their beings, or if you want to like be at war with them and uh, fight them. And then if you want to go down the path of like bringing peace to each planet, you, you can learn their language that they speak. So you'll be able to, you know, communicate with them and be able to like access different playgrounds and other stuff like that. Um, yeah, um, the challenge also in our game would be able to explore the environment, to be able to get new materials, to like upgrade gear, upgrade guns, and access different stuff like that. And um, yeah, depending on your choices, so whether you would want to make pace or go to war, uh, there will be two different boss battles at the end of your traverse into the four different planets. And, you know, the bosses may have different play styles, like some may be slow, but will bring like strong damage, and some may be fast and like stealthy, and like hit you more in fast hits. And then that's how you'll be able to traverse onto the next planet and be able to explore the different planets more. And then the mechanics in our game is how we're going to make our game interesting. Um, so each of the planets will have different types of enemies and again different play styles and how they'll be able to attack and fight you. Um, and there will be different materials and resources so you'll be able to once again upgrade different like weapons, your gear, maybe to, to even get like different skins so you can customize your character and stuff. And yeah, uh, the main way the character will move is just the way it is key if you're playing on PC or the triggers and like to be able to aim and shoot. Uh, yeah, and within each of the planets there will be different types of enemies and bosses and they'll get harder and harder, so it won't be boring for the people playing, as if it'd be too easy, you would just like want to get off the game. So the conclusion for our game. So Sonar Asker is a first person shooter set in the year 2013. Um, it's set within different planets including Cleese, Blue 3 2 Cotton Candy Planet, The Diamond Planet, and The Nightmare Planet. And it's a multi-choice based game, which will affect the game's outcome based on the player's choices and actions. There are several different kinds of happenings within each of the planets, which allow us to play diversely within our game's characters and you know, the different like lore behind the game and the planets. And yeah, we think this will allow first-person shooter players to enjoy our game's experience.